Okay, so we're still in um, quarantine, and so I just want to continue the little video series that we started. And so last um, video, we talked about God's big love for us. And so in this video, I want us to focus on God's big power. So not only does God have big love, but our God has got big power. Um, Hebrews 1, 1 through 3 says, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways, has spoken to us in his son in these last days, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. And he, Jesus, is the radiance of his glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. Just let that sink in. Our God upholds all things by the word of his power. All God has to do is speak. He says a word and it, and it happens. He says sun shine and it shines. He says um, waves break and they break. He says earth spin and it spins. He says stars stay and they stay. He says wind blow and it blows. By the very word of his power, he holds all things together. And then again in Colossians 1, uh, chapter 17, we read that he is before all things and in him all things. In Christ, all things hold together. So our God it has big power when just his word alone sustains the entire universe. We have a big God. And so one of my um, stories that I like to share about God's um, big power comes from Numbers chapter 11. I know we don't usually spend a whole lot of time in numbers because we think ah, it's just a you know, book of numbers, but there is so much more to it. So in Numbers chapter 11, the children of Israel have been delivered from Egypt. Okay, they have crossed the Red Sea. They have watched God bring down the um, nation of Egypt through the plagues. They have watched God one by one start ticking off the false gods that this nation had trusted in and then, you know, knocking down Pharaoh himself. And then after coming through the Red Sea, they have watched God deliver them from the Amalekites as Moses held up his um, staff and Aaron and uh, her, I believe, um, held up his arms when he became tired. They have watched God pour water, bring forth water from a rock. They have watched God um, bring manna down from heaven to provide food for them. They have seen the power of God. And so, but unfortunately, when we get to Numbers chapter 11, what we discover is that all that God has done for them has not been enough. Uh, they are now complaining about the manna. They have come to Moses and they are grumbling and they are complaining and they are letting Moses know that they are tired of eating this manna. It's manna for breakfast, it's manna for lunch, and it's manna for dinner, and they're tired of eating manna. They're so tired of eating the manna that they now come to Moses and they're like, look, we, should, we could at least just go back to Egypt. At least in Egypt, we had meat. At least in Egypt, we had onions. At least in Egypt, we had something to eat besides this manna. And so um, forgetting that they were slaves. So they're so controlled by their stomach that they had rather go back and be slaves than continue to um, be provided with what God has provided them with, with the manna. And so Moses has had it because he's, he's leading these people and he feels like he has done everything that he knows to do to make these people happy and there's, it's not enough. And so he comes to God and he's like, look, God, um, you gave me these people. You told me to bring these people out of Egypt and all they're doing is complaining and I've had all that I can take. He got Moses goes so far as to say, okay, God, look, why don't you just go ahead and just kill me if you're not going to do something about these people because I've had it up to here. I'm done. 
And so he most until then. And so God um, hears Moses. And of course, God has heard what's been going on in the camp. He is right there with them. Lest we forget that he has been leading them in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And not only that, the tabernacle has been completed by this time as well. And he is dwelling among them right there in their midst. And um, so God knows exactly what is going on. And so um, the Lord looks at Moses and he's like, okay, Moses, here's the deal. Um, I'm going to give them some meat. I'm going to give them some meat. I'm going to give them what they want. And he says that they will not eat meat for just one day. They will not eat meat for just two days. They will not eat meat for just three days, nor five days, nor 10 days, nor 20 days. He says they're going to eat meat for an entire month. They're going to eat meat until they don't want to eat no more meat. And they're going to eat meat until that meat is coming out of their nose. And so now Moses is like, okay, God, that sounds great, but I have all these people and we don't have enough flocks. We don't have enough herds. I could go out here to this sea that we are camped beside and I could fish all the fish out of this sea and it still would not be enough to feed these people for an entire month. So what do you want me to do? And so now is comes one of my favorite verses in all of scripture. Here, there is the setting. And so set this time to where God looks at Moses and he says, The Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's power limited? Is the Lord's power limited? Now you shall see whether my word will come true for you or not is the Lord's power limited so then the scriptures tell us that about that time it says the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and um, and then he caused a wind to blow in verse 31 in numbers 11 31 we see that he caused a, a wind to blow and from this wind coming off of the sea comes flying meat quail and quail comes into the camp and it keeps coming and it keeps coming. And yes, this people eat meat until they're sick of eating meat. And they eat meat, I am sure, until they start vomiting this meat and it starts coming out of their nose. So let that just resonate for a moment. If God is able and willing to display his power in that way when he is upset with the people. How much more do you think that he wants to display his power to those who are trusting in him, to those who are seeking to be obedient to him, to those who are grateful for all that he has already done for them and in them? And through them. How much more do you think that our God would want to display his power to us? Is the Lord's power limited? And notice that after that, God says, you will see if my word, my word will come true for you or not. There's power in God's word. God's word is powerful. Have you limited God's power? Is God's power limited in your life? Are there things going on in your life that you don't see any way that you can deal with them? You don't see any way that um, it can work out? Is the Lord's power limited? His power is not limited. His word is true. But then comes the next question. How much of his word do you know? Do you know the promises that he has made to you? Do you know the strength of his power? You have to get into his word to discover that. And I think also sometimes 
we limit the Lord's power because we're afraid to ask. We're afraid to ask because we're afraid that he just might not come through for us. He just not might not be willing to be there and to answer for us. So we don't even ask. Is the Lord's power too limited? It is not. Step out. Ask the Lord specifically for what your, your needs are. May be different in the way that he provides for that. Sometimes I believe that we limit the Lord's power because in order to receive his provision, it may not look what we think that it should look like. Or it might require that we have to make a sacrifice and step away from some things in order to step in to what God has for us. The children of Israel had the promised land right there before them. And God was simply asking them to sacrifice a little bit of meat. Is the Lord's power limited? It is not. He has big power and I don't care what it is that you are struggling with whatever it is that you are going through in and through him trusting in him one step at a time if that's what it takes let him prove his word true to you